For those of you who don't already know me, I'm Vicki Falcone. Hi, and for those of you who don't know me, I'm Paul Babin. And uh, I'm Vicki's husband. And mm -hmm. Vicki and I work together with couples who want more closeness, want more fun, want more connection in the relationships, people who want to be heard, speak their truth without fear of being judged, attacked, or criticized. So here's a typical situation we're going to role play for you. It plays out every day between couples, some version of this, one that leads to a lot of disconnection, definitely is harmful to intimacy, and see if you can relate. It's dinner time, and we have just sat down to eat. So how was your day? Oh, it was challenging, uh, but good. I had two sessions with clients and I worked on the big outline um, that I'm Excuse gonna get I'm the sorry. present. I'm, I'm sorry, to, I'm getting text from the office. Just oh. stand by. Mm. Do you have to do that right now? Yes, I do. I mean, God. I, well, then why don't you just stay at the office? You can have dinner with those people. Well, if you're going to make a big deal out of it, I will. So we leave our angry, resentful couple to eat their dinner in silence. Later, we're going to show you how this icky situation can actually be turned into an opportunity for creating intimacy and fix the problem that was never dealt with. Okay, so... Uh, so let's, so let's talk about who this workshop tonight is for. Some of you have texted and asking me, um, and it, it, it's uh, this is for you tonight. If you are in a partnership, it's also for you if you're single and you want to learn how to create more intimacy in your next relationship. It's for you if you're engaging in frequent fights that often seem to be about the same thing, like, like cell phones. Cell phones, yeah. Um, it's for you if you're feeling disconnected from your partner or if you're getting stuck in patterns of blaming or criticizing your partner. It's for you if you're feeling unappreciated or unheard, but mostly it's for you if you really want to learn how to feel really deeply connected to your partner. So here's what's possible when you start using some of the skills that we're gonna talk about tonight. Yeah. You can go from feeling lonely and unappreciated to feeling heard, um, maybe for the first time in a relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, you can feel loved, adored, and deeply connected. And here's the best one. Mm -hmm. You can begin to take situations that are upsetting, that are challenging, and turn them into opportunities to bring you closer. Yeah. So uh, pointing to your handout, I'm going to paste the handout in there again for those of you who just who logged on after I um, posted it in there. But there at the top of your handout, let's talk about what we're going to cover tonight, what you're going to learn in this workshop. You're going to learn how to communicate better with your partner, your future partner or your current partner, how to listen and be heard. You're going to learn to say what you're really thinking, right? Very courageous thing to do what you're really thinking in a way that actually brings you closer. You're going to overcome some of your blocks to intimacy and then learn how you can take all of this further if this is interesting to you. So a little bit about us first, uh, about where we came from and uh, where we are today when it comes to relationships. In my first marriage, I was not good at listening. <clears throat> if my wife came to me with a problem or a complaint, I was good for about a minute, you know, tops before I would start to respond. If she had a complaint about another person or a work situation, I immediately started uh, offering advice, you know, how to fix the situation. Um, if her complaint was about me, I'd get defensive. I would start to critique her or I'd plan the quickest escape possible. By the end, my defenses were always up, my ear flaps were always down, mm. and intimacy was impossible. And when that marriage, that 25 year marriage ended, I knew I had a lot of work to do because I did not want to repeat my part in the next relationship. Uh, I got into therapy, I began to read everything by Eckhart Tolle and Byron Katie and Margaret Paul and I began to do inner child work and 12-step work. This led to my going back to school. I got a master's degree in spiritual psychology, mm -hmm. continued on and um, was certified in their coaching program. And I've been a practicing coach now since 2015. Mm. 
And in my first marriage, my practice marriage, <laughs> I call it my practice marriage, um, I had a long habit of blaming and criticizing my husband. Not only that, when we had a big disagreement, I would dish out one of the most destructive and disconnecting practices of all time, the silent treatment. And then I would wonder why I didn't have the intimacy that I so wanted. Well, like Paul, for me, it was a long road of healing and learning new ways of interacting. Uh, but both before Paul and I met and also after we got in our relationship, we've been together 10 years. I did a lot of work to learn the skills and to heal the patterns that had me in those dysfunctional ways of connecting in my first marriage. Um, I had the great good fortune of having one of the top relationship experts in the world as my personal coach. That's uh, Dr. Gay Hendricks, who wrote the book Conscious Loving. I also, our work is influenced by Gay Hendricks' work, by Pia Melody's work from 12 Step, and by our degrees. We both have degrees, you know, master's degrees in spiritual psychology. So, but the big one I learned, right, Paul, tell me, <laughs> is I learned what to do instead of criticize. I almost never, never, very rarely, if ever, criticize I'm my most. I'm surprised every time you describe being critical in your last marriage. <laughs> it's so not you right now. <laughs> so I have a lot of hope for you. So my current husband is saying that, you know, you can turn around some pretty destructive and negative patterns. We have tons of hope for you to do that. And I learned to listen, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, and, and simply let Vicki be who she is without penalty and mm -hmm. vice versa. Yeah. Um, yeah. And now we have a relationship that's truly extraordinary. I'm in love in a way I didn't know existed. Mm -hmm. uh, we both feel deeply loved and appreciated and it continues to grow and surprise me. And um, we love sharing these tools and practices that we've used to help create this really great relationship. Yeah. So, Let's begin by defining intimacy. We'd like to hear from you. What is intimacy? Uh, how do you define it? You can, um, you can uh, put it in the chat box. Um, put it in the chat box, or you, if you want to chat, you can at the very bottom, if you want to talk, actually talk to us. Just unmute, huh? You can, yeah. Well, I'm going to have them raise their hands. Oh, okay. So down at the bottom, there's a little smiley face that says reactions. reactions. Yeah. yeah. And if you click raise hand, like I just did it for us, you see a little hand goes up. I'll put it down now. Welcome, LaTanya from Colorado. Welcome. Um, and uh, so we'll call on you. Or you can just put it in the chat. But what does intimacy mean to you? Like if we were to say, define intimacy, what is intimacy? Let's hear. I'd like to we hear. Closeness, being understood, feeling seen. Yeah. Beautiful. Great. Agreed. Agreed. Because we have uh, we have come up with a definition that we've mm -hmm. assembled. Ah, here we go. Oh, here we go. Audrey, thank you. Vulnerability, honesty with acceptance. Ooh, we love that acceptance. Latonia, uh, loving at a deeper level, emotionally, mentally, physically. Beautiful. beautiful. Really beautiful definitions. And I would say yes to all of that. And we have a particular working definition that we're going to be using for tonight. So you can take a look at the worksheet there that you have new definition of intimacy. Two people speaking their truth without judging or trying to change the other. Two people speaking their truth without judging or trying to change the other. What do you think? Does that sound good to you guys? Yeah, heads are nodding. <laughs> heads are heads nodding. Are nodding. Yes. So so let's get into what we mean what we mean by truth, judging, and change. And we'll start by talking about the truth versus my truth. Mm. Um, you ready? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Wow. Babe. Whoa. Everything is green. Um, no, 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 babe. It's pink. It's no, look, I mean. Look. No, I see the light here is pink. The lamp is behind this. It's pink. This has to be a conspiracy of green. No, it's definitely like Why there's a can't rose. Why can't you ever see it my way? Honey, anyone would tell you. We could ask any of these people here. Things are, it's all this rose. Clearly it's green. It's pink color. Does this sound vaguely familiar? 
<laughs> Eyes rolling. This, this kind of standoff that um, we all go through. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there in the worksheet, it says, my truth equals my perception, which may or may not be the truth. The problem with the phrase speak your truth is that our reality, each and every one of us is colored by something called perceptual filters, which are actually formed by, actually, it says right here on the inside uh, oh, really? where the manufacturer's oh, label see. is, it says, it says oh, uh, yeah. this perceptual filter is a product of China. No, it doesn't say China. This is a product of your mind ah. and may have little or no relationship to the truth. Dang. But I like being right so much. Well, so do I. Okay. Our perceptual filters are a product of our beliefs, our past experiences, our childhood conditioning and wounds. Yeah. We can begin to create intimacy when we accept the fact that my version of reality is simply how I see it. Yeah. How I see it. H-I-S-I. Yeah. And we have hissy fits when our um, how I see it is not recognized by our partner mm -hmm. when our hissies are different there in your handout. Mm -hmm. And we insist that mine is right. My hissy is right. Yes. <laughs> Whatever you say. Mm -hmm. Bam, bam. Yes. We'll tell you about that later. Um, so the solution to this. We have a solution to this. And it's, it's what it is, is you're going, to, you're going to begin by starting to use a phrase, a phrase consisting of four words. Mm -hmm. When you utter these four words, they are going to signal to your partner, number one, that what I'm oh, about to- Oh, we're on to, page two, top of page two, to follow along with us. Yeah, what I'm about to say is not necessarily the truth, but it's what I see through my glasses. Yeah. It's my hissy. Mm -hmm. Number two. I want to avoid a hissy fit. Number three, I'm willing to be vulnerable and describe the situation, or sometimes the problem, as I'm seeing it, mm -hmm. so that we can both check out the validity of our thoughts, yes. of our versions of reality. Yeah. And number four, in doing all this, I am choosing to create intimacy. So, so what, four, are the four words, the four words, what are the four words? The four words. I made up that, mm. dot, dot, dot. Three ways of introducing how I see a situation mm -hmm. that, that may or may not be causing conflict. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now we realize that this phrase of the biggest reject, the re biggest resistance we get when working with clients is, and it even happened on the webinar last week. I don't know if some of you were here last week is like, these words are awkward yeah. and they are because they're new. It's a new way of doing it. But let me, we're going to give you some real life examples of when you can use this phrase, I made up that and the power of doing that in, instead of doing what our people did where they went in a downward spiral toward argument and upset about the phone at the table. And it's three different situations that we want to share with you. And it's one time that, that we use the phrase, I made up that in kind of a very minor situation, a small situation. And it's one time that we used it in more of a medium-sized level of being triggered and upset. And it's another time that we used it in a, a, a deeper, bigger, more vulnerable, um, upsetting situation. So I'll, I'll start with mine. And that is, um, I, this happens pretty often here um, where I'll say to Paul, like I just kind of process information. I move much faster than Paul. You can probably already figure that out right now. And I will say, and I said to Paul one night, I said, do you, let's go out to dinner. I was pre-COVID obviously. <laughs> I said, let's go out to dinner. And I look over and he's kind of like this, you know, <laughs> like, and I said, do you, does that sound all right? And he goes, yeah. I said, well, okay, do you feel like the Italian or should we go to that, the Tinder Greens place? I really like that. You liked that last time. And he's kind of over there looking very lackluster. And I, I'm making up a story about what he's feeling. Any guesses, anyone wanna type in like what I'm 
we can make up all kinds of things. If you, you feel like taking a guess, I'm making up a story and it's totally made up by me because I haven't even checked anything out with him. But uh, so I said to him, he doesn't want to go to dinner, right? So I said, yeah, I make up, he doesn't, yeah, exactly. So this is um, on a very light, minor situation. I said, you know, I am making up that you're just not that into dinner. And it led to a really beautiful resolution of a very tiny issue. It wasn't even really an issue because that was not what was going on with him. But I'm going to pause right there because I just want you to see how you can use the term I made up. So that's a small kind of very minor situation. So early in our relationship, we had we hit a couple of bumps and things got uptight and Vicky's MO was to grab her keys and head for her car. She would head out the front door. Like that, gone, like this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so one night I stopped her on the way out the door as she grabbed her keys and I said, you know, I, I appreciate you don't feel good, but I'm making up that my feelings are not important. Because the reality is that every time you leave like this, it hurts. And boy, did that stop her in her tracks. Yeah. It was very powerful. Yeah. 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 So, and then, an, and then an, a bigger upset. So the time to say, share what, you know, these words I made up that is anytime you're triggered, you know, small, medium or large. So I'll tell you about a pretty significant one for me. Uh, when at the beginning of Paul and I dating, um, some of you know my story that my first marriage ended in my husband having an affair. So that was a that's a pretty sore spot uh, for me. And we all have tender spots from our previous relationships. And that was mine, my major one. And um, uh, when Paul was going to University of Santa Monica, there are these big, long, intensive weekends and he came home on a Sunday night, I was volunteering at, at the weekends and he was a student. So I was there about half the weekend and then he'd attend and come home on Sunday night and on Sunday night, he'd just be exhausted. Um, and so on one Sunday night, he came home and he said, oh yeah, I went to, uh, I went to lunch with Trisha and, um, and they had these, they have 90 minute lunches. And I'm like, oh, was, was anyone else there uh, at the lunch? Now, let me just tell you, Trisha, is a very attractive, 10 years younger than me, divorcee, just going through a divorce. So I got triggered. So I said to Paul, I said, oh, when I hear you say that you had a 90 minute one-on-one -on -one lunch with this very attractive woman, um, I'm making up that you're not um, being very, you, you're, I'm not important, right? So that was very vulnerable for me to share. And my old self would have either taken the keys and run, you know, my MO, like Paul said, was running, which is super destructive to a relationship, running, fight, fight, or fleas, or uh, fleas, <laughs> I'm thinking of the cats right now, mm -hmm. fight, flight, fight, flight or, or freeze mm -hmm. are the kind of trauma response reactions to upset. And so this takes a lot, but we wanted to just give you an idea of some real life situations that we have had and where you can use it if there's all different levels of being triggered or being bothered by something. So being willing to speak your truth with your partner is, the, is a really great first step to creating intimacy. And takes a lot of vulnerability a lot of time and is very new for a lot of people, but their issue rate is still not quite resolved. So what do we do with all those feelings that are stirred up inside of us? And we can be really tempted to judge that person as wrong, right? So we've got feelings, fact, we've that's, got thoughts. We've that's got... like the knee-jerk response that most of us go to yeah. when, we, when we've been upset. Yeah, Sorry, go ahead. It, it is what finish is judging. Yes. Yeah, is judging, right? Yes. Yeah. It's like they did something That's, wrong and they're bad. They they're, are bad. And 
it's it's negative some version of negative yeah so judging let's talk about judging and um so deciding something or someone is right or wrong or good or bad and that decision has an emotion attached to it that's what goes in that blank there it has an emotion attached to it usually negative right so i don't i'm not going to spend a lot of time on this one we all know what judging is right and what it feels like but specifically in relationship it leads to righteous any guesses what goes in that blank <laughs> guesses righteous hair no no not righteous hair no righteous superiority righteous superiority yeah so you know if in it, in, it can happen in a blink of an eye you know it's like they did that to me like i'm a good person and you're not thoughtful you've got your phone out at dinner you know i'm trying to have a connected relationship and you're the one that is ruining that you're the problem you're the problem you 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 right yeah. number two surprise surprise it disconnects you from your partner it disconnects you and it puts an end to all learning and in an ideal situation, we learn to, and again, I know it's gonna, it's new for a lot of people, but in an ideal situation, we get curious about what's going on with our partner. And then so we can learn um, what they're making up for one thing, right? But if I'm judging, that just that just shuts just all shuts of that all the down. Doors. And trust yeah. me, I know because we all have our triggers. They're really deep in there. They're from our childhood. So I get it. It takes some work to change those, which is why we have a uh, something we want to offer you a little bit later that's going to give you a lot of support to do that. Lastly, judging, surprise, surprise. I know you're not going to be shocked by this one. Judging kills intimacy. It kills intimacy. And it creates a lot of suffering too, not only in the one being judged, but also in the person who is judging. It's painful. Trust me, I know. Me too. Yeah. So top page three, let's get into the solution for this one. I love this one. Um, Paul, Paul shared it. He got a little bit beyond the I make up that and he shared it when he said it hurts me that, you know, you don't see this relationship as important enough to stay here and talk. So Paul was sharing a feeling. So the solution is to share these words. And I felt and I felt. And um, I'll just want to share with you a real life example of a toxic combination of judging and having an incorrect perception. See, in a relationship, saying the words, I make up, that gives you an opportunity to actually check out. We're going to go deeper with this a little bit later. Gives you an opportunity to check out the stuff you're making up in your head. So, um, Right. Let me tell you a true story. It's, it's acknowledging again that you're looking yeah. at the world through these. Yeah. So I was shopping at uh, Whole Foods. Um, this is a story about judgment. It's a story about judgment and perceptions. And perceptions. Both, both, both together. And uh, and so I was shopping at Whole Foods at the beginning of the pandemic. And, you know, when things like when the energy was really weird and tensions were very high and the lines were super long to get in the supermarket and as I'm pulling up to park in this, I was uh, going to park in this first space. I could see it was empty. I see this woman pulling her cart up to the first space, the closest one. Not that I needed it, but it was the one open. But I see her empty her cart and put it in her, uh, her car right there and drive off, leaving the cart in the first parking spot. So um, any guesses about what I made up about her because right, we make stuff up all the time all the time we are making up stories about people who driving in traffic you made, up, you made up that she was a really considerate person I did I made up that he uh who wants to type in a chat there what do you think I made up about this woman who unloads her groceries and leaves her cart in the first parking space like that she's a jerk she's a jerk right so well so there's the judgment audrey exactly right so you're exactly right um uh putting it mildly yes that that's exactly what i thought so my perception was she doesn't thank you my perception is she doesn't care about it she's obviously completely does not care about other people 
because I'm thinking I don't need that first spot, but someone else might, you know, it's really, truly wasn't a big deal to me, but yeah, exactly. You see this swirl of my perceptions and my judgment. You guys got it all. She's selfish, doesn't care about others. She's a jerk. Now, look, most people would have these same thoughts, right? It's not like I was crazy off the end with these thoughts. So um, and how, did you, how did you feel when you were judging her? I did not feel good. Yeah. And so, well, what I, 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 I'm pretty good at catching, right? Cause I don't want to stay in that, mm. but I'm, I'm like, wow, rude. And then I, and then I did go on and say, because I don't want to live in that energy. It took me several minutes, I'll say, but I thought, you know what? I don't know. She could have gotten an emergency phone call, you know, from one of her kids. I, I don't know. She could have be injured. I, you know, we don't know. So I like to try to make up stories that are more neutral. But anyway, the point being, I park my car here. I come out with my cart. I, uh, this first spot is um, empty again. That is my cart. I unload my cart. I go to take my cart back because I am a nice person, Paul. You're not selfish. I am. I try to be a considerate person but the cart will not budge absolutely frozen there because why type in the chat why is my cart frozen there why can i not budge it because you needed to be taught a lesson i did because i needed to be taught humility <laughs> you have an experience of judging someone else and being caught in it right? and i did i was a little caught in it because because of the automatic lock huh? because of the anti cart theft system yeah past the magnetic boundary exactly mm -hmm. and so i i'm like oh <laughs> so look this is a minor example right but it happened i just share this so you can see we all make stories up and then pass judgment all the time this is something i'm working on uh, i don't want to be doing this um but i do because I'm human and you do, and you certainly do when the emotions run high, when you're in a relationship. Stephen Covey in his book, Seven Habits of Highly Successful People, tells the story of getting on the subway early one Sunday morning. It's quiet, there's just a few passengers there. This is in New York. Suddenly this father and his four children get on and the kids are just creating chaos, uh, disturbing everyone. And the dad is just sitting there comatose. And Covey's getting all upset. He, he assumes that this, this is just a lousy father who's not paying attention to his kids. And he finally storms over to him and says, do you have any idea what your kids are doing, the havoc they're, they're creating here? And the dad kind of comes out of his stupor and says, oh, yeah, I, sorry. I guess I should get, get them in line. Their mom died 20 minutes ago, and, and, and I'm sure they're just working off some of the energy around it. And of course, Covey went from this judgmental place, right, to suddenly empathetic, suddenly saying, oh, my God, how can I help you? How can I serve you in this moment? So it was a really it's one of the most dramatic examples of being caught in in one's judgment that I've ever come yeah. across. So, yeah. so we all do yeah. it and we're all making stories up about other people, about our partner. Uh, so it so it becomes these these four words become so, so, so important, so, so vulnerable for us to share. And to add to that, I made up this and I felt to your partner, yeah. I made up and I felt. Even with the people who were closest to us, this is, this is the thing, you know, th these obvious things with strangers are, are obvious, mm -hmm. but with the people that are closest to us, We've got to recognize that they don't have the same color glasses that we do, <laughs> even with even if we've lived with them for the last 15 years. Yeah. Right? Yeah, absolutely. So let's yeah. talk about that last one, change. Again, this doesn't need a ton of discussion, but it's um one that a lot of us can get hooked into so easily trying to change the other person, right? So it, everybody knows how it goes in those first few weeks and months of a relationship, right? Um, we are, uh, 
uh, well, Bill's like, oh, Paul's going to do this for us. I didn't know if he was going to do this, but this is how it goes, right? We're, we're dating. Don't it's a, go changing. Don't go changing. To try to please me. You never let me down before. Mm-hmm. I do bar mitzvahs and weddings. So <laughs> don't hesitate to pass the name around. Right, but that that's how we are. We're all starry-eyed. Oh, we're star. I got a man who sings to me, you guys. It's just super awesome. That's right. Um he doesn't have to drink to do it either. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, but that's how it is, right? We're it's we're always like this. It's just like, oh, don't ever change. You know, it's just amazing, it's perfect. Um, and then we get into it and our issues get flushed up, which is really natural, really normal. Um, and and if you work with it in a really healthy way, can really facilitate a healing. But if you go unconscious and try to change the person and get into codependency, um, that, cr- of course, affects your ability to create real intimacy. So um, codependency, we you know, is basically walking around and acting this way. Um, um, I need you to blank so that I can feel or not feel blank. So we're not going to go off too much in a tangent of that, but that's, that's a codependent behavior. Like I need you to change. And so one of the most disconnecting phrases you can say to your partner is you should, or you shouldn't. Yeah. I think you should this. I think you should that. Um, and I understand because I'm a recovering control freak, but control is what's called the master addiction. It's the addiction that's above all the others and running all every other addiction. Um, so it's a strong one and we don't suggest you can change it easily, but here's how you do it. You, for me, what Gay Hendricks, how Gay Hendricks taught this to me is he said, you need to up-level your complaints and your criticism to a request. So the solution also can be very vulnerable depending on what you're asking for, is to instead of getting into making your partner wrong, criticizing, blaming, attacking them, is to get really clear on what you would like from them. Now they get to say no, which we'll talk about later, they get to say no, thank you, but to say, would you be willing to blank? So, um, well, I'll share. We'll share how our three situations went. So, courageous, vulnerable, new for a lot of people, but absolutely, absolutely essential. It seems like I'm talking a lot. So, why don't you go over what's in the what gets in the way of creating intimacy? Sure. So what gets in the way of creating is our, well, our conditioning, our unconscious habits. Um, you know, as children, we are, we come to some conclusions that are not necessarily accurate about the way the world runs, about our own value, so forth. Uh, and we're carrying that into adulthood. It's, it's affecting everything. Yeah. Um, number two is the fear of being vulnerable. To be, to be intimate is to be vulnerable to share how you feel, to share what, what your view is like through these, is putting yourself in a place where you might be uh, hurt. And the third one is lack of skills get in the way mm-hmm. of creating intimacy. Mm-hmm. Creating intimacy for most of us is a process of unlearning old habits and learning new ones and it's just like going to the gym is you know we're we're awkward at first it's it's we get sore as we break down old old muscles and and try to build up new um right so let's jump into that well i love this quote before we go to page four and and we have absolutely found this over and over and working with couples and singles who want a relationship too but definitely once you're in a couple relationship this is a different Hendrix. Uh, my coach was Gay Hendrix, but there, there happens to be two Hendrixes with different spellings that are both leaders in the field of couples communication. This is Harville Hendrix. And I personally have to be, I'm going to be a big fan of Jimi Hendrix. So it all okay. works out. And all, we have lots of Hend- all the Hendrixes are covered here. But Harville uh, says in 40 years of couples therapy, 
80% of the couples didn't need therapy. They needed skills and tools. So let's put this all together. We have absolutely found that. We have absolutely found that. We for sure just didn't have the skills. So taking all that we've talked about endlessly so far Mm -hmm. and putting into action. Page uh, four of your handout. Page four of the handout. Here are the talking rules. When your partner has said or done something that has upset you and you need to talk about it, in as few words as possible, and that's very important, Mm -hmm. say, when I saw you or when I heard you, fill in the blank, Mm -hmm. what I made up about that was, and I felt. Mm -hmm. Number four is optional. Mm -hmm. You may want to address it then, you may want to hold off, but eventually you probably want to say, would you be willing to, and very often that's, renegotiate or create a rule or, you know, create a structure uh, so that this kind of upset doesn't occur again. What did you ask me if I'd be willing to do when um, I was, I was leaving and, and running out the door and grabbing my keys without talking? I think, I think I said, would you, oh, it's written down. (laughs) Would you be willing to stay and talk things out? Yeah. See, I was going to say, would you be willing, you can go, but would you be willing to come back in like 10 minutes mm-hmm. after you've blown off some steam or mm-hmm. doing, trying not to run your car into anything, but <laughs> would you come back? And yeah. if you said yes, then I'll feel comfortable. I won't be experiencing this, you know, unworthiness thing around your leaving me. So, yeah. 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 Um. So the second half of the talking rules is when you're the one responding to the above statements. So if you're, if what your partner said seems accurate, you can say, I see it that way too. Or if what your partner said seems not quite accurate, you can say, well, I see it differently. Are you open to hearing Mm -hmm. what it's like through mine? Mm -hmm. Or if it's unclear, you can say, I, you know, I want to make sure I'm understanding you. Can you tell me more about that part over there? So, yeah, yeah. Um, so when we, let's give you an example of this. Um, at the beginning of our webinar here, Vicki and I did a little scene around a cell phone. Mm-hmm. And um, for those of you who weren't here for that, we're gonna repeat that. And then we're going to do it again using the talking rules, mm-hmm. okay? So the setup is a couple at the dinner table. Right. And uh, right. Mm -hmm. Version one. Mm -hmm. So how was your day? It was, it was challenging. I had two sessions with clients and then I worked on that big outline for that presentation. I'm I'm sorry. It's a text. This is a text from the office. Just you could stand by. (sighs) Do, Do you have to do that right now? Yes. Okay. God. Well, then it's why work. don't you just stay at the office? Why don't you just have dinner with those people? Well, if you're going to make a big deal out of it, I will. Cut. Not a very happy situation. Um, so let's give these people the talking rules mm-hmm. and see how it might actually create more intimacy from the top. Yeah. How was your day? Uh, it was kind of challenging. I had two sessions with clients, then I worked on the outline for that big um, I'm presentation. Sorry. I'm, that I- I'm sorry, I'm getting a, getting a text from the office here. Oh, okay. <sighs> so what at this point, at this point, what are you doing? What are you at this point? Can, can we talk about, can we talk about what happened? Can we talk about this? Yeah. Well, when you stop in the middle of a dinner that I prepared for us to answer a text, I make up that you think that I'm not very important and that your work is always going to come first. And I feel frustrated and and hurt about that. Well, I see it a little differently. Are you open to hearing what it's like over here? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
when you get angry with me for texting at dinner, I make up that you don't care if I'm successful in making money and, you know, in supporting our family. And in that moment, I feel really alone and kind of scared. I'm wondering, is it possible we can create some kind of agreement where maybe I can answer some texts during dinner? Yeah, yeah, we can talk about that. Yeah. Okay. Time out. So, um, the conversation can go any number of directions at this point. It can go towards creating a new agreement. And in the process of creating an agreement around cell phones and dinner, um, it's very likely we'll use the talking rules again because as soon as as soon as we start to get emotionally triggered, we're going to probably want to say something like, you know, when you just said that, I'm making up that, mm. and now I'm starting to get that again. I'm starting to feel this way again. Yeah. Um, there are, I mean, and what we just did is a very much a bare bones version of how to respond to each other mm. to create intimacy and solve the problem. There's more tools mm -hmm. that are available for, for making this conversation even more effective. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think you get the point, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's, it was very different the second time around. Yeah. There, yeah. Was, there was an opportunity to have intimacy around yeah. this problem. Yeah. This has absolutely changed our relationship. I mean, I was a, some of you know, I, I was a parenting expert for 25 years. I taught parenting classes. I wrote a book on parenting. I was a keynote speaker and I had a lot of skills for um, acknowledging feelings and um, uh, being encouraging and praising. Uh, but I didn't, I didn't have this particular format and it was awkward for both of us. Absolutely. In the beginning to, you know, especially the, the words like I made up that it was awkward and it was vulnerable, but just like it was for me in, in parenting when I, the first things I did with parenting were so awkward for me. I remember being my three-year-old child and I had never known before how to acknowledge feelings. And it was very, very new language for me, but it was funny because all the stuff I learned at parenting did not automatically transfer over, transfer over to my relationships. It's really a lot of the same stuff, but it's done in a different way to really create intimacy. So here in just a couple minutes, we're going to open it up for Q&A, see if you have, uh, we want to answer your, uh, absolutely have time, lots of time to answer your questions. But we want to talk about that last thing we talked about, that last bullet point about if you're feeling called and want to hear about what it would be like to take this all further. So we have created well, we taught five years ago here in our house, we taught this wonderful um, work that we're going to talk about, the Relationships That Works class. We have way up level in our skills since five years ago, right? And then just we've had more time because of this goofy pandemic um, to uh, do this again. And we are so excited. We haven't taught together in five years. So it's like the universe said, okay, you guys think you know your stuff? Here, yeah. handle this, put yeah. it through this. Yeah, yeah. And, and the other reason we got really motivated to, te to teach this now <clears throat> is that so I think so many of our clients, they're having all this togetherness and the togetherness is absolutely not creating closeness. What the pandemic done, has done is put tremendous pressure. Some of our clients very happily have gotten engaged and gotten married because people have under this pressure, they're like, I wanna do this. But what it does, so the other reason we're offering this is because our clients really need tools. So uh, several of them have already uh, shown interest and are signing up for this. So it's an eight-week class. We're going to teach just like this on Zoom. And this is what we cover in the class. Week one is mastering the language of connection feelings. We shared with you tonight, you've got to share what you feel. But for most people, that's, that's new and it's challenging. So we get into the dirty dozen, the 12 phrases that shut down feelings and intimacy. I'll give you a hint. Almost all of us say them all the time as part of our culture and why becoming more emotionally intelligent makes you irresistible to your partner. In week two, um, we talk about how to hear and be heard. You're going to learn what causes your partner to want to listen to you, how to feel seen and heard and important. Um, research shows that Women's number one complaint in a 
couple's relationship is not feeling heard. Men's is slightly different. Um, so we address that. Week three, how to release judgments of your partner and yourself. That sounds good. How to transform past resentments into peace. How to live in a state of radical self-acceptance. Right? The more acceptance we have for ourselves, the more acceptance we're going to have for our partner, and the more peace we're going to have. Mm -hmm. Week four is all about how to move from criticism to connection. This is the journey that I took. How to have more love, less war, what to do instead of fight, flight, or freeze when the heat is on. This is not easy, but no. it absolutely can be learned. Um, and how to go from criticism to connection. Week five, chime in anytime, honey. How to win your partner's respect and admiration. Do this three times a day and watch your connection soar. Some of this stuff is really simple. We, the stuff in week five is super simple. Anyone can learn it. Um, we just don't think to do it. How to communicate your wants and needs in a way that invites deep respect. Um, one of the things that prevents intimacy is not being really honest about what you want and what you need at any given moment. Again, it can be really new and a big stretch to do it, but it's incredibly It, it can be a new stretch to really get clear on what you want and need. Thank you. Yeah. So Thank many you. of us were not given um, the training for that as children. Yeah. Our, our needs and wants were not, not respected. So. Absolutely. Week six, do I have to give up me to be loved by you? So many people, um, myself included, get into patterns of self-abandonment once they get into relationship. So this is a really important one if you have any, <laughs> any tendency toward that, which is very, very common. This is all about codependency. Yeah. The two words you need to stop saying now if you want to be true to yourself and how to stop people pleasing and show up more authentically in your relationship and in life. These are life skills. A lot of these. Any people pleasers in the room? And people, at least there's definite hands going up on that one. Yeah, we understand. We're both recovering people pleasers. Yeah. Week seven, how to love yourself more so your partner can too. There's a lot of talk about how, you know, we need to love ourselves more. We need to love ourselves more. But loving ourselves takes specific action. So we talk about what you must do to genuinely love yourself more. Turns out it is action. And it's not manicures and pedicures. Well, um, although those are great too. Partly. Yeah. And then how healthy self-love invites more intimacy very naturally. And the week eight is all about heal your past and let the love in. How to heal the childhood patterns that have kept you longing for more love and intimacy. So the relationship works course, what's included in it is the live course. Again, there are gonna be 90 minute sessions taught online by us with plenty of time for Q and A and coaching, which we're gonna open it up for in a minute. So you get to experience that with us. Um, we're making it so you can bring your partner or a friend for free. When we taught this in our living room, it was twice the price of, of this because that's what people just paid. Um, all sessions are recorded, so you don't miss a thing. So if you miss a night or two, you, you'll get the recording the following day. Um, and this is what we used to charge per person for the relationships that work course is $3.97 per person, but we're making it $3.97 per any two people. So if you and your a girlfriend or single and you want to do this and learn these skills again these a lot of these skills I learned I'd say about half of these skills I learned before I met Paul so now is the time if you're not in a relationship and about half I learned with him so the course is 397 it starts a week from tonight Wednesday May 19th and um well, I'll save this. Uh, uh, well, no, we'll do this now and then I'll open up for coaching. So comfort zone. We all have comfort zones where we um, live most of our day-to-day -day lives where it feels pretty good and we're not pushed too much outside of that. But the thing is, if you want intimacy, you want closeness, you want this kind of connection that we really authentically have, hopefully you can feel it. Not everyone walks their talk. We very much do. But what you want is outside of that. So stretching and, and whether it's taking our class or working with another coach or a therapist or something, I, I highly recommend that you get the support to and get be willing to step outside that comfort zone. Okay, so I see hands up. So let me go back to this. Yes, Lauren. So I met a man and he was an avid vegan. I'm not a vegan. And 
he's going to like basically say that I only like vegans. And if you're not a vegan, you hate the earth and you're a bad person, which that's what I feel like he is doing when he's saying that, that I don't care Time about out. the earth. You're making up that just going to do a tiny. I'm tiny making that up. up. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, he actually kind of said it. He goes, if, if people like the earth, why won't they be vegan? Like he literally said it. And in my head, I used to think, oh, do I need to have a partner that has the same way of thinking and seeing and having their same opinions of me because that's probably going to be impossible right like your part the question is do you have to just marry someone who believes has the same viewpoint of the world the question is how do you deal with this in relationships or or do you recommend going out with people who have similar worldviews Mm. or dietary needs there's only one person (laughs) who can answer this question and and her name is lauren what what is What are your what are your absolute have have to haves? What are what's what's negotiable? And well, I, would, I want to feel safe to be myself. I want to feel like I can yeah, eat thank an you. Egg. That's what I, I want to feel like I can eat. I can eat an egg and not feel like an evil person. So but also, but what, what I want that for you. <laughs> I want that for you, Lauren. That's the most important thing. Just I have this desire for someone to want to see the world the way I see it, and is that important or am I just wanting that for my own comfort Mm -hmm. yeah yeah I hear you talking about judgments about being Mm. wrong yeah you know and and this is where judgments begin to really break down relationships there's a difference Mm. between between you're not a vegan therefore you're you're not acceptable to me yes Mm. and you know it'd be nice if you were vegan, but it's not all that important. Mm. And I, and I still, I'd be loved to be in a relationship with you, even if you're a meat eater. I felt he was very arrogant though about it. And it made me feel really uncomfortable. That's the non-workable for me. It's the judgment. It's like the acceptance. Yeah. Yeah. I think you could, I I think there are, I know couples that are Democrat and Republican that are married. Okay. 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 So that's in, in current politics in United States of America, that is like this. It didn't used to be so like, ooh, uh, Paul's precious son is getting married to yeah. his absolute soulmate. Yeah. He is vegan, absolutely mm-hmm. strict vegan. She is not. Mm-hmm. So, so what Paul's son must have is a tolerance of that. And so mm-hmm. I wouldn't want, so you don't have to have the same values but the value, the thing that I want you to have is someone who has acceptance of you. Like, I don't care what it is, Republican, Democrat, vegan, non-vegan, you know, all the things that people have a lot of feelings about. Um, so I think, you know, but I would be, that'd be a big, a big yellowish, orangish flag going up for me. You, he's letting you know how he feels about it. But then I notice I have judgments. Like I think people should recycle and he didn't recycle. So, you know, like, so how do I be careful with my judgments? What are, what, what's the difference between having judgments and having like values and discernment is what you want. Yeah. And discernment is, is coming to the conclusion very unemotionally. Mm -hmm. This doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can, be with a partner who has completely opposite political views or religious views and just not need them to be like, is this is what I want to know. Can I love someone? Cause I don't think it's like, can I love someone without wanting them to think like me? And is, is that kind of the healthy way of having well, relationships? There's, there's, I would say <laughs> that part of that is you, I, I, you, you've got, you've got some dysfunction and some function all mixed together here in that. Okay. Statement. You hear that? Yeah, so I could hear. Tell me what part you think is healthy and then what part do you think is just more dysfunctional? Well, I'm aware of the, the dysfunction of thinking that I need another person to think, see, believe, understand, perceive the world and life like me. And I think it's why I'm too fussy in relationships. So this is why I'm bringing it up. Like, would you say it's healthy to accept that they're not, like, not everyone has to have my opinion? <laughs> Right. And I, I find that challenging in relationships, like when I'm dating someone that like if they're living in a way that I don't like to live, it challenges me. And how do I be with that? Yeah, that's that is the question to live into. I mean, that's the, one of the biggest arcs of change that I made, Lauren, is 
coming mm-hmm. to accept, you know, get really clear about when is it time, because this is an inner exploration for you. When is it time to practice acceptance? And then when mm-hmm. is it time to stand firm in this is what I need in a relationship? Mm-hmm. And that's not a quick, yeah. that's not a quick answer. It's an exploration for you. Vicki and I have gotten to a place um, with, I'm making up that, mm-hmm. that we will use it in the moment. It's not necessarily saved for talking about things that have happened. Mm-hmm. I will say, you know, as you're getting ready, I'm making up that, that you're holding some resentment about my not going with you. I've gotten so in the habit of using those words. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, it's, it's, like, it's like a light goes on that mm-hmm. fills the room that says, oh, the person speaking is being vulnerable. So, um, so go gentle here in your, in your response. Yeah, I mean, what a lot of we're gonna, what we're going to be talk about in the course is how do we create safety so that that can happen? Because yeah. one part of it is mastering the skill yeah. you know, that's new and, and foreign. And another part of it is like, how do you create emotional safety? Hint, hint. One part of it's no judging. Um, absolutely. Can we use that with family and friends too? Yeah, you know, absolutely. This, uh, these are universal, you know. Um, well, in, in you, you may not want to take, you know, use that with your boss, but if it's a really important relationship, any important, your best friend, for sure, you know, someone you're really close to who you want to create intimacy. So maybe your boss, not so much, but your best friend, anyone you want it, where you want to create real intimacy. And several of the clients I work with, I work with a lot of women who want to attract their soulmate and, and they'll use these talking rules. They'll start to use them with their best girlfriend you know, where a place where it's really safe, where it's really comfortable so they can build, build this muscle. I wanted to tell them the Bam Bam story because I, Mm. I, it's just a, it's just a funny story about does the other person need to understand this tool too? It is ideal and they don't, and you don't need them to. It's absolutely ideal, but not needed because I use it with people. I look, I use it with my clients all day long. When stuff happens with my clients, I said, oh, I'm making up that. I remember I had a client come with her, uh, the, the guy she was dating. They came, they sat down and he was just like, he was like this. <laughs> He's like mm, sitting in that chair right there. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, I'm making up that you don't want to be here. Um, it just, it created so much. I wasn't judging him. Um, it created so much, like he started crying um, because I wasn't judging, I wasn't tacking, but I also wasn't avoiding the elephant in the room. Yeah. So you explain it to them. Yeah. If someone, I'm, if someone I really want to build intimacy and I'm close to, absolutely. The way that I don't know if Paul brought this to me or I brought this to him, the talking rose, probably he brought it to me um, and said, hey, here's this thing that I learned and I really want to practice with you. And if you, you know, we, that that's how that's how we did it. So uh, you know, just a f- funny story, and that's um, that's in my recovery. We'll act this out a little bit, okay? This is spontaneous, but I want to tell you the Bam Bam story. Um, uh, in my recovery, I'll, I, I, I'm recovering. Need to be right, person. I'm a recovering. Like no, no, no. It is definitely pink, and you have to recycle, or else you're a bad human on the planet. <laughs> I, I, that's me. We actually have a recycling story about that, but, but, uh, if we have time. So bam, bam story. So I, I am a recovering, I have to be right person. And I want to just tell you my graduation, Paul and I, it was a very hot summer day here in LA. And I put my hair up like this in a ponytail. You see that? And this was just so hot. I couldn't even have my hair down. She walked in the kitchen and I said, you look like bam, bam. And from I, the Flintstones. I said, Oh, no, I said, Bam Bam. No, what is it? <laughs> Bam Bam is the boy. Remember, he was like, he's with, he's the little boy, and the girl is Pebbles. I'm Pebbles, actually. And I Pebbles. insisted that was not so. I mean, we were going to act it out, but that's okay. Oh, he's sorry. like, no, no, it's, no, it's um, Bam Bam. It's Bam Bam. You're yeah. Bam Bam. I'm like, no, remember, no, remember the Bam Bam was the little boy who, who was always hitting the ground. Remember, no, like Bam Bam. I don't think so. I'm like, I'm Pebbles. And I grabbed my phone. 
to Google. And then I just turned to Paul and I said, you're right. You're right. You're yeah. right. Yeah. And so now every time one and of And of course, a couple of weeks later, I found out that was not <laughs> the case, that I was completely wrong. She had she had just thrown in the towel very lovingly. So 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 now whenever we get to a point in the conversation when we say, where we disagree. No, no, right? I, it's like this. No, it's no, it they're pink. Yeah, right. That's, it's pink. Bam bam. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just say bam bam. Did we just supposed to say bam bam. <laughs> where it was like where, that yeah. means means we don't know. We don't know. I could very well be wrong. We don't know. And uh, I'm not going to stick with my with my uh, my point. Mm. Yeah, because I love you too much. Yeah, exactly. Because my the intimacy is more important to me than yeah. being right. And that was upside down in my first marriage. Gosh, I wish they would have trained us. You know, someone's asking, do you think these skills can be helpful if you are transitioning from marriage to having some sort of working sincere friendship? Hmm. Yeah, it is. But I wonder if you can talk. This person's uh, typing me privately. Do you have children? I'm just curious. Do you have children out of that relationship? Because I would just say yes. You know, if if you're both on board. Because if some person is still really hurt, and not if you're both committed to creating a sincere friendship, um, some feelings are going to come up. Son going to college. Yeah. So if, um, so if there is a child, um, absolutely, because you're going to really be connected to this person um, the rest of your life, really. You're connected. So that's very different than a marriage that ends and there's no children. So I would absolutely make it a priority to have these talking rules come up around, you know, and, and you don't have to wait for your partner to do it. You can just, you can, one person can do this. It and can be powerful if one person one just person starts doing it. it. You know, yeah. maybe it may be a little shocking to the other person, but mm -hmm. you're getting their attention in a, in a new way, in a new and powerful way. Yeah. yeah. So you're going to, it's going to be required to have some kind of, you know, a relationship. You're going to have like Paul and I are going to be going to a wedding next year where his ex-wife is, you know, we went and had coffee with her. It's like, we are committed to peace, you know, in, in all, all things. And my wedding uh, was, was a pretty stressful event due to the stepmother of my dad, you know, and them not getting along. And it's just, you know, holding on to those holding on to those old hurts. So yeah, I mean, you're not going to be working a lot to build intimacy if you're coming apart. Um, so I would, you know, there are some definitely some lines there. Uh, but I, I think it'll be really powerful. And by the way, uh, kids love the talking rules. Yeah. They, they will, they will grab up these these rules and play with it, make it very playful very quickly. And it's so educational. It's so instructional. Uh, I, I've heard wonderful feedback from adults who've said, hey, we're going to try a new way of communicating. Mm. And it goes like this. And, and it teaches children um, emotional intelligence, which, which is so valuable, so important. Oh, well, hey, homework, yeah. homework. Just notice in your mind, as you go through your day in relationships, at the mall, whatever, start to catch what you're making up. Just what you don't even have to communicate it. Just as your new, your new homework. And thank you, Wolf, <laughs> Shelly. Thank you. Yeah. Just so homework, just start to notice. You don't even have to communicate it for a while. Give yourself a few days to just notice. What am I making up? Ah, I just got triggered by my partner. What, what am I making up? Don't even have to say it yet. But some people from last week, thank you, Bree. Some people from last week have already emailed us. They're like, we're already using this. So we know that you can run with just what we've given you here tonight. Mm -hmm. So we hope you do. All right. All right, handsome. Hey, beautiful. What are you doing later? Oh, I'll be here. You'll be here? Okay. Yep. All right. I'm available. You're available? Uh, okay. Yeah. Let's unmute and say goodnight to everyone. Guys. All right.